Hello and welcome back to the Polar Next channel. I'm Aaron Nehera, your host and head of content at Polar Next, where we talk to professional photographers from all around the world about their experience with our editing program. Today, we're sitting down with John Bartlett, whose wedding photography has been painting the story of love all across South Africa. John has been exploring the features of Polar Next and is joining me today to give us a candid take on his experience. It's a great opportunity to gain perspective from a photographer who's in the trenches capturing those once in a lifetime moments. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated on our latest videos and give this video a huge thumbs up. What's up everyone? Welcome back to another interview. Today we've got John Bartlett from South Africa with me today. He's been using Polar Next for the last couple of weeks. John, why don't you say hello and introduce yourself. Hi, my friends. So my name is John Henry. I'm from South Africa. I've uh, been a photographer for like 12, 13 years, something like that. And um, yeah, we're checking out Polar Next, show you guys a bit of what it's about and how that is such an amazing, amazing tool. It's really such an amazing tool. I wish I had this years back. I would have saved years I of know. my life editing <laughs> and um so yeah, we're, we're gonna check it out. But yeah, hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, um, so great. You already had such great feedback for for me and the team um, since you've been trying it out, and I had to get you on here because your enthusiasm, I love it. I want to talk about your your journey into wedding photography. So, like, how did that get started? To make it short, um, I I was initially, I mean, my my. When I finished school, I had three I had three options for career choices: either theoretical physics, uh, psychology, or I, I mean, like I'm quite an artistic person, and I love art. I love creating art, and or it was photography. But at that time, I mean, I I was like full on into skateboarding, right? Like. I'm I'm one of these people. Like if I if I do something, like I go all the way, yeah. Even to the detriment of myself, to the detriment of people around me. Like I I'm one of these people. I just if I'm into something, I go so far beyond, it. and I mm -hmm. totally like lose my barriers or boundaries. And through skateboarding, I realized like hell, bro. <laughs> you started this way too late. These kids are super talented skateboarders and they're uh, half your age. You it's you got to find something else to do because you won't be able to make a profession out of this. So, I decided, okay, well, if I'm not going to photograph skateboarders or if I'm not going to be a skater, then I'm going to photograph skaters. And nice. so I decided like okay, I'm going to study photography and at least this 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 kind this line of work will at least make it so that I can at least meet people, and I'm not going to be stuck behind a computer like programming the whole time. Or you know, you you're going to be you might maybe not make as much cash, but like you're going to meet people, and uh, you know, it's going to be you. You know, if I if I weren't doing something like this, I'd never meet any people because that's yeah. like my kind of personality type. You know, more introverted kind of person. Yeah, and um. So through that, through studies, I realized like, hell man, like events is amazing. Like you can meet people. It's a great vibe, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's such a great experience, like for you to document something and, you know, capture authentic authenticity and like genuine moments. And if, if the people that you are doing it for really value what you do it's one of the greatest feelings in the world like no amount of money can like compare to that for me yeah. weddings is going to probably be the best thing for me to to get into to be able to make a living because yeah. like you can shoot bands and you can shoot festivals and you can do these kinds of things but to make a living out of that is very difficult right mm. So like Facebook everything this is like I mean this was in 2008 right or 2010 and like Facebook, wow. Instagram, all these things were kicking off. And I'm like, you know, if people are on these platforms, they're going to want images of themselves. And if you can do this job really well, then you're going to be able to make a decent living, right? Yeah. So 
um, the plan was sh shoot as many events and throw myself into the most challenging uh, photographic positions, right? Like the darkest clubs, the most difficult to shoot environments. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that well, then you'd be able to shoot weddings really well, right? Uh, you know, taking into like the whole psychological aspect of shooting a wedding, that's like a kind of different, it's like totally different to shooting like events and parties where everyone's wasted and things like that, <laughs> right? Yeah, so that was the goal. I told myself, you know, if you're going to shoot weddings, start off with these events, festivals, things like that. Yeah. And through that, if you can do that well as well, and it, even in the hardest, most challenging environments, then you should be able to do weddings really really well because a wedding is probably one of the anyone can shoot a wedding but to do it really really well it's just, it's not as very very difficult the lighting is changing the whole time it's really very it's very challenging currently aside from polar next what is like your main workflow like what is your regular routine when you come home from like an eight-hour wedding take us from upload to deliver what do you do uh, so, so my, my files, uh, you're shooting on, on raw file and uh, JPEG as well, right? So all the JPEGs, the first thing I'll do is upload the JPEGs onto an online drive. So at least I know if my house burns down, whatever happens, that's going to be safe. JPEGs are uploaded. I'll in that, in that time frame, I'll start backing up all my images onto multiple drives. So I'll back up my images onto two drives. I keep one of the drives separate from where where I am staying, uh, just so I know that that's out the way and that everything that side is secure. Once you know that, like that's the most important thing to make sure that these images are safe and um, everything's backed up and that you don't have to worry that if you even if you leave your house like five ten minutes from now, that when you come back and your house is burned down, at least there's something that you can still give to the client, right? But, you know, once that, that aspect is sorted, photo mechanic, I'm not sure if you know that application, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I, I, I love that because it, it basically shows you your, your raw files as if, as if it is a um, JPEG, right? So you can quickly yeah. go through the image, quickly to go through the, the, the um, images, do your selects. Remove the images that you know are definitely that you're definitely not going to use. So, like yeah. images with the people's faces already formed, or you know, like you get, you know, I mean, you get the strange images, right? People's just it's, that's how <laughs> photography works. Not every shot's yeah. perfect. So, remove that because you want to save as much space as possible, right? Like these files are extremely big, it's like 55 yeah. megabytes of file. I mean, that that adds up if you're editing that, and it's a tough tough file ends up being like gigabytes um so you want to just have what you need right yeah and yeah so once you've got the images uh selected well to well it's just cold so at least it's um you know you've got the images that you're definitely not going to use you've got them out yeah. of the way and then you can focus on on the other images because you still have to like put the story together and you know select the images that's part of the whole Part of the whole thing right like how you put the images together and which images work together and mm -hmm. you know that's that's you know that's a huge part of the whole process so once that is selected into lightroom presets and then start experimenting i mean i might not use the same presets and, and experiment you know like yeah. uh, I, i'm still experimenting quite a lot so you know darker background a bit more moody a bit brighter depending on the venue like this there's a lot of diversity especially for us here you're in cape town like the the weather changes so much right mm -hmm. because we're like in between all these mountains and there's like an ocean on this side there's a mountain on this side there's like tuscany from italy's on this side it's uh -huh. really such a diverse thing we have so it's not like you're shooting in the same place the whole time you know what i mean yeah. It's like every time that you shoot at these different venues, you're shooting in a different part of South Africa. That's kind of what it feels like. So you, you can't really use the same preset for all the for all the pictures. So the first thing would be to find something that works for that specific area, right? Mm -hmm. 
and um, just go according to that. From then on, like it's pretty much just creative process and uh, experimentation and yeah, pretty much. So that that would be the process until the end where you know you do all the images, you've edited everything, everything's good. Um, you know, probably into Lightroom or into Photoshop from Lightroom. Okay. To to um, you know change to fix minor details yeah you know that you can't there's certain things you can't just do in lightroom that uh you have to do in photoshop because it's just like finer finer things that you like a lightroom just doesn't lightroom is like the base you know it gives you a good base and then for you to be like you know to do like um fine to work on fine details then photoshop for that so yeah, it would be like twenty percent of the images would maybe need like a minor touch up or whatever, and mm. that's pretty much the process, Aaron. You know, I think you <laughs> think you'd be able to relate to that as well, right? It's like that's yeah. pretty much the vibe, right? You know, it's that's pretty much it. The just like the most time consuming thing is getting all the images to look the same. Through yeah. that is, Thank you, you know, system. like like this app that you guys have. I mean, if this, if I really had this app like 10 years back, say of like 20% of my life, you <laughs> I know, feel that, man. it's going through. You know, one of the things that you mentioned in your feedback about Polar Next saving you so much time just from even the microseconds of delay and lag you experience in Lightroom. Like, I kid you not, it doesn't matter what Mac or PC you have, eventually it will like start to slow down and like, my, my PC, it's like, it's built for streaming and 4K video processing. Like, there's no reason why it should be slow. Like, I've got my catalog in the same folder, um, the same M.2 SSD as, you know, my previews and my raw file. Like, I've, I do everything that I can to optimize and it still will experience. And I get that it's like processing. It's got other AI processing things, you know, brushing, finding faces and eyes and things like that. But... I think, but it, what, but Bruce, even prior to that, even uh-huh. prior to the AI stuff, it was still lagging. Still yeah. lagging, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, we do a lot of batch editing, you know, and to be able to batch edit quickly, I I don't know about you, but to get through like a six eight hour wedding, it would take at least fifteen to twenty hours to edit everything, you know, and to get everything consistent exposure, consistent color, you know, working with presets. And uh, so, you know, I, I ventured into Imagine AI, I've adventured into Aftershoot edits, and I did the whole profile building, submitting 5,000 images to create your, your look and things like that. And, you know, after about a couple of years of using back and forth between those, like I just still didn't find a good replacement for Lightroom because I always felt like, yeah. oh, Imagine I don't want to pay up front for the edits because I'm going to end up re-editing them anyway in Lightroom because AI yeah. is not perfect and there will be mistakes and stuff like that. And yeah. then after shoot, um, like although the the interface and stuff is nice, it, it is n- like I still wish I could just see my images before like I start working on them when they edit. And then mm. also, you know, again, having to train your own profile and look was very cumbersome. So, you know... And then all the solutions, even like impossible things, which is another like AI editing program, everything's so hinged and dependent on Lightroom. And mm-hmm. I don't know if I share this with you, but when I was testing out Polar Next, you know, the founder and CEO asking, were asking me, you know, what would it take for you to leave Lightroom? And, you know, it's such a big ask of any photographer, I think, because Lightroom has been the standard for like 20 years. But... Who's to say that it should continue to be the king yeah, of your photo editing? Yeah, no, you know what I mean? But, yeah, bro, Lightroom should have stopped this lag a long time back. <laughs> like, if they don't fix that, they, people are going to leave them for real. You've been using Polar Next for now for a few weeks. What was, like, your initial reaction when Polar Next reached out to you? And was like, hey, John, you know, want to see if you check out Polar Next. It's an editing program that utilizes Google Chrome and this and that. Like, what was your impression at first checking out the program? Oh, checking out because my initial reaction was like, how the hell did these people find me? But <laughs> with the, the the program, yeah. um, oh, dude, it's like super simple, super simple to 
to navigate, super simple to access. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, were you skeptical at first, like Google Chrome? Like, I, I'm I really editing through a browser. Ah, oh, dude, like I've, I've, I have faith in AI. Like, the, this is about mm. the time when things should be getting to this point. You know, like it's been a really, really long time that we've been doing like wasting our lives away editing. Like, the, you know what I mean? So, like, I was kind of expecting for things to be at this level at this point. You know, okay. somewhere here, and. So it was like more or less what I was ex expecting, but what what really took me away was the, the accuracy of the of the actual presets to the and how it how it took everything. I mean, I dude, I just the first time I saw that, I just like thought of all the years of my life. You know, <laughs> honestly, that that was my first. I think the initial honest, uh, you know, self complaint like, thing that I thought to myself first, like. If this came out so many years back, it would have saved so much of my life. Could have done so many other things. But yeah. no, I mean that's that's just how it is. And that's I think the biggest thing that I grasped from this program from first from my initial, you know, because it's very quick. Like you get, you, it takes you quick to do the reference images, right? So you yeah. mark your reference shot to your reference shot. That's super fast. So you you get into it like super quickly. And I think that's probably. Um, the 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 biggest factor that stands out as one of the most impressive factors of the program. It's like, yeah, dude, it's it's just it's absolutely like mind mind blowing, but uh -huh. still in a way that like, damn, this is where things are supposed to be, you know, at this point, like twenty twenty four, like this this is a cutting edge of probably like AI technology for editing yeah. editing images. Because I've also really like experimented with Imagine AI, and that's. Like takes so how long, dude? Like how long do you have to upload all your pictures? And then it's like a sense per image, and you have no idea what like what image you're gonna get. So like <laughs> what what are you what's even happening here? Yeah. But with this pretty transparent and like you mm. you see what you get. Yeah. And um yeah, yeah, dude, like I love it. I I honestly I'm gonna move from Lightroom and just just uh move to this program for the rest yeah. of my life, hopefully. <laughs> like I'm done with Lightroom. I like you. You do this no, for real, yeah, like no bull, like no, yeah. months. this is for real. Like from somebody that's been doing this for many, many, many years, wow. and have extensive experience doing this kind of stuff. It's a game changer. It that really means is. A lot. That means a lot. Yeah, you no, know. well done. Well done <laughs> to the dev team. All you yeah. guys, you guys really did an, an amazing job. I really love, I really love the product. And I'd be yeah. you know, very proud to, to represent this or that's just awesome. present this to other people for sure. That's awesome. You know, one thing that you kind of mentioned too is like, for for me, you know, with the magic, it's like you're not know you're not knowing what you're gonna get. Like that's what I loved about Lightroom is like you have that creative control over it. But with mm. Polar Next, with AI, you have full control over it from beginning to end. You know, and like from our conversation already, people are watching. We're not saying like you know, you know, wasting our time editing and now we can push it on something else. Like we're still in the driver's seat with this thing. We're still directing it and being creative with it and editing with it. We're still spending some hours with it, but not like 20, 30 hours, you know, like on the thing, like we're, it's, we're significantly cutting down that bulk mm. editing time. And we're yeah. still being able to create our own style, our own creative vision for this and have that thing, you know what I mean? Because uh, a lot of people can worry like, oh, okay, you know, now your editing's going from 15 hours to two, three hours, you know, so should you still be charging your prices? Well, absolutely, of course, you know, because now you have the possibility of doing more retouching for your clients. You have the possibility of, you know, offering a quicker turnaround time, which our society, I feel like our culture, how we are with like being so instant, I feel like maybe clients are expecting now even a faster turnaround time as we go along in these years. And honestly, that's something that I, when I raise my prices, I'm offering now a much quicker turnaround time because of Polar Next. So mm. it's not that like you can't charge because you're not doing the work. You're still doing a lot of hard work, but it's just more efficient. So um, why don't we jump into it? We've talked a lot about it, a lot of good stuff about it. Let's jump into this. Um, so do you have something that we can up import or do you want to go from here? Uh, well, so this, this album, I started 
early, maybe a few hours back and I did a few reference plots. And okay. I, t- I, t- I chose this because this is probably going to put this system to the maximum test. You've got <laughs> images which are shot in daylight, like flash, okay. flash kind of images. I mean, like the, this kind of shot I wouldn't use, but stuff like this, you know, it's, it's very diverse yeah. with like well, different show us, tones. Show us the references real quick. Go ahead and click that, that purple diamond and let's just kind of view just the reference images uh, down below it. Yeah, right there, bam. So these are the references yes. that it chose for you to edit. Yeah, by default, these are the images that's selected. Well, how does it select that? Does it check, check, look through everything and then select one image based on, like, how does it do that? How does it yeah, select so the reference images? Yeah. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to select them based on their groupings and then, like, the the lighting scenarios. So when you edited these references, did you start off with a preset that we have, or do you have something imported from Lightroom? No, I imported one of my presets. Okay. So you started from there and then you kind of edited it and dialed it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just like basic, basic changes as if I would normally, as if it was in Lightroom. Yeah. 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 And then on the left side, we got that history um that history panel to be able to go back and see all the little adjustments that you made um kind of mm. cool i did a interview with one of our other guests gabby and she kind of mentioned like you know with history before you used to have to click on it to see what the effect was now it's kind of similar to with the presets when you just roll over the history you can kind of see like what what it looked like and then if you want to go back to it then you just click it so uh, also real quick i want to know on your history i see you added a mask what were you masking? Was it the people or? So for, so can I go into this image? Yeah. Or Mark, how do I, oh, I can still fix it. Okay. So, so what I did for him, so initially like oh, okay. his skin was slightly purplish, right? Oh, okay. So a tiny, just a tiny bit. See, the, the only thing that's still missing is like an opac- is a opacity for this brush. Oh. Or not, you, but, but do you understand what I mean? Like if we have the strength here, preset strength. Yeah. Right. We've got the strength to select the preset strength, but for we don't have that option for the masks. I'm sure it'll okay. come sometime, right? No, but, that's a um, good feature request. I could I could put that in. Yeah, that's you see, so it's what I would need to do here is take that math to 80% because here it's just a little bit too overpowering. Okay. Whereas like there, it's like he's kind of purplish, right? Like he's got a purple. Yeah. You need to add some green into his skin to to balance the exposure or to balance the color. So uh, this is now at a hundred percent on this brush, whereas I need to bring this brush back to like eighty percent for it to look the best that it can look. But it's still okay. fine. Okay. It's not to say that you have to do it, but it's I think for optimum effect. You know, you've got to you've got to just bring it back a tiny bit to get the most realistic looking effect because you wouldn't ever have realized that I've done this, right? Yeah. Like it's it's well from normal people, they wouldn't realize that. <laughs> but if you take the like the before and after, you can see it's quite a huge, it's quite yeah, a I can, big I can difference. See the difference, yeah. Well, take us to like the darker now scenes. Let's see how well it did with um matching the consistency of the yeah, the exposure pretty the good man stuff. like like i said dude this was probably some of the most most challenging thing that i probably could give could give this um could give this the only thing i really had to do with these pictures was change like the curves up a little bit or yeah change the curves so like i think by default came like this mm-hmm. so all i had to do is basically bring down the curves a little bit because I mean, look at all these pictures, bro. They're like all different light, like it's completely different lighting for almost every shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for it to get a consistent thing, I think would be extremely. See, so it has kind of this faded thing still. So I would just have to, you know, bring down the shadows a little bit, can play with the highlights, and that's good. That's good. I'm happy with that. You know? Yeah. So if I did that, then Mark is a reference. Let's see. Then it, then it would apply that to everything, right? Yeah. Yeah, see, so for this one, I would still probably have to dehaze this a little bit. Dehaze, bring him so he doesn't look like he's in this misty vibe. Bring down <laughs> the 
bring down this a little bit, see how that looks like that. Well, his piece, suit right? is literally fire. <laughs> yeah, bro, these guys, yeah, yeah, that's really, there's some super interesting outfits for this. See so if a shot like this, like a background would be totally over brown side, most likely do something like this, then bring in a, a linear gradient. Uh, how did we do this last time? So we got to, I've got to reverse this gradient. Yeah. So go. something like that, bring that down. And then I would bring up the exposure for that. Something similar nice. to that. And bring actually leave this exit, bring down the exposure so it would be a bit more balanced of an image, mm -hmm. um, something like that. So that that would kind of be the the only thing I would probably still do is if the grain is like a bit too much, I would bring it into Topaz AI and oh, reduce the grain. Do. That's what I do. Yeah, Topaz pretty pretty good for that kind of stuff. And yeah, so that's. For an image like that, pretty much the same same vibe for this, which is kind of bring down the this little bit like that highlights totally blown out, but that's mm. that's uh it's not much I can do about that. But yeah. to get the person's and I'd actually probably turn this into a black and white, you know, mm. see that's black and cool white moment. This that's a cool moment. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well, other black and white yeah uh, we'll see let's see we'll see the yeah that's 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 the process right you you can go for like 20 minutes it's like am i gonna make this black and white i'm gonna make this color that's uh, one of the things we deal with right yeah but um shot like this like look at this bro the skin tone's perfect pretty much that's good the, the whole time you've been going through zooming in zooming out busting out linear gradient there, i've seen no lag on your end I mean, you just Nothing. been like flying through. It's been just like a fluid experience. Flying through, bro. That's that's a, that's what. Yeah, that's what I told you, bro. That's what. That's a game changer, hey. It really is a game changer. That's a huge. That's a. That's an incredibly huge draw to this yeah. program as opposed to anything else. Like Lightroom, really. They they should have fixed this up like a long time back. That problem. <laughs> it's like the people that are working at Lightroom don't use their own program and realize that like this is what's actually setting them back, right? So yeah. yeah, good job to you guys for like realizing that and fixing that, you know, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. One of the things that I had to kind of, you know, think about when I started editing with this program is, you know, I mean, everything was pretty much being in comparison to Lightroom. Um, so at first I was kind of like, oh, like my presets not looking quite like how it is in Lightroom. Like I even got to the point where I like, I literally went value by value and typed in everything. And I was like, you know, it kind of still isn't exactly how it looked in Lightroom. And I'm like, well, this isn't Lightroom. You know, like this is a completely different mm -hmm. program that like when I was editing Capture One, like I, I couldn't expect Capture One to do exactly what Lightroom was doing. So mm -hmm. when you're editing in Polar Next, like your values might be a little different and off, but I think in what I've found in all my interviews with people is that you can still achieve like the quality and mm -hmm. your look with Polar Next. And, and we're only going to get better, you know, with that. And so that's exactly. why, you know, getting in, you know, and checking it out, like some people might not have the tolerance right now for a beta program, which is completely understandable if they're running like a real efficient, well-oiled machine, you know, and they have their workflow set in stone. But you know, f for me, like I'm, I love being like open-minded and trying new things out and stuff. And so yeah. Yeah, that's why we even have like our, our, um, founders, like, you know, addition and things like that. So if people jump on early, then you lock in those prices. Um, but yeah, it's not, it seems like you're, you're pretty willing to take on those, uh, those beta pain points and stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, like, uh, I would I've, computer programming, bro. I, was, I used to do this stuff when I was like 13. So I've got a good understanding of like how like code works and things like that. It doesn't bother me, you know? Yeah. It's like, I, I, I know what, what I would need to do to make sure that the problem, you know, gets fixed or it just refresh or it just restarts. It's like, it's not something so bad, <laughs> you know, it's, you're saving like 70% of your editing time as opposed to, you know, just a few minor bugs for the time being. Like, it's like, that's, 
yeah, it's yeah, you can't really compare <laughs> them, I think. Thank you so much for man for spending this time with me and, and taking me through your workflow and talking about your journey in wedding photography. It's uh it's not only cool like for Polar Next, but also just to personally meet another photographer where you kind of have like a similar journey in a way. Um, but I'm really excited for 2024 and like what it has in store for you, especially by way of how much time you're gonna be saving by using Polar Next. And uh yeah, we look forward to to having you back on. Any like final thoughts about it or anything you wanna say to maybe some photographers that are checking it out? Uh yeah, guys. I mean, coming from somebody that's that's been doing this for 12, 12 to 14 years editing pictures like check this check this program out um it's it's, it's a cha- it's a game changer hey? like it's gonna if you if you spend especially for wedding photographers and event photographers i think that's who you guys are directed towards right it's it's an absolute absolute game changer one of the best experiences i've had in photography for a very very long time very pleasant and you know it's it's like what what it should be they've taken all the bad aspects of all the other ai programs and kind of eliminated that and taken the good aspects of all different programs and put it into into one thing the best thing for you if you are actually in this line of work for you to experiment with this and just see for yourself that's totally i mean if you value your time and val- like your time is probably your most valuable commodity right so if you yeah. value your time you know this is like a no-brainer it's something you kind of have to do have to do right just let's just oh, like if you i mean if you're saving time it gives you so much more time to do to be more creative and do more more things with the do more photo shoots create more content <laughs> yeah. create like do just have more time to better your better your business, better yourself, whatever, as opposed to yeah. sitting, fiddling with numbers. Like we shouldn't be doing that. You know, we shouldn't have been doing that for a very long time. So it's, I'm glad, I'm glad it's here. If you're a photographer or <laughs> somebody else in this line of work, it's really check it out. Like it's really, it's really a very good thing to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Super easy to check out free to import as many images as you want free to edit as much as you want. You only pay when you export, which yeah. <laughs> another huge thing the, i love the, exactly but in the transparency as well like that's that's a big draw factor like like what you said how how you see what you're getting that's that's pretty big right like you know, i mean if you're edit, like you can't see what you're doing that's ridiculous man like yeah. you know it makes no sense why well, it would be like that you yeah. know so it's like that's more like some kind of thing just to get cash out of you whereas this is like actually helping you as opposed yeah. to just trying to get money out of you you know you might right. like, I think that comes through in the program. So, you know, top hats off to you guys. Dude. Like, I really love this program. I'm very keen to experiment with it more. I've got these new weddings that I've edited. I still have to do the selects. And then as soon as that's done, I'm probably just going to start, I'm going to leave Lightroom, you know, <laughs> all, like even those masks and that, yeah. all those things that you do with the masks and all that, like you can, that's not a time, like the amount of time that it, Lightroom actually just takes to set up those masks. I mean, you could just erase it with this and you'd pro- it'd probably be still quicker in this program as opposed yeah. to having, because it takes a while, bro. Really. Like if you were to select just the faces of all in the image, it takes about like five seconds for it to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you know, even for you just to erase it, it's, it's probably, you know, to spend the same amount of time doing it. Ah, yeah, no, bro, I'm, you know, you guys, I'm sold, hey, for real, for real. I've also experimented with Imagine AI and um, I can't remember the other one. It's like a plugin in Lightroom. After shoot. And this, hey? Uh, impossible things, after shoot. I mean, there's like so many different ones that are plugins yeah. to Lightroom. Mm, but yeah, this one by far, bro. Very, very, very happy with it. Gee. Sounds good. John, I hope this isn't the last time we chat again. You know, hopefully in the future, you know, when we get 1.0 finally released out of beta or something like that, it'd be so cool to like reconnect and just see, you know, how long you've been using Polar, like how your experience has been with with Polar Next, uh, you know, in the next few months or so. But 
It was yeah. amazing chatting with you, my friend. I know it's late and you got to get to bed, but I uh, just want to say thank you and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. I'll be sure, guys, if you're watching this, I'll put his um, website and Instagram down below. You guys can go give him a follow, go say what's up. Be like, hey, I just watched your interview on YouTube. What's going on? Uh, thank so. you, Drew. I appreciate Yay. that. Drew. Thank you so much for reaching out to me and introducing me to this, Drew, because yeah. even the time I've spent with it so far, it's it's really a game changer, bro. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, well done on creating this program. You know, It's about time, though, right? Like 2024, <laughs> all this AI stuff is kicking off. Let's go. It's about time somebody does it right, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, bro. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one, okay? You too, Aaron. Thank you, Boo. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll see you. Thank you so much for tuning in today to my conversation with John. I hope his journey with Polar Next has inspired you and shown you the limitless possibilities of what our tool can do for your photography. Don't take our word for it. Head over to our homepage, dive into the world of Polar Next. It's completely free to import and edit as many photos as your heart desires to see if it works for you. Be sure to connect with us on Instagram at Polar Next to see more stories like John's and join a community of passionate photographers just like yourself. Before you go, don't forget to like this video, hit subscribe and smash that notification bell so you never miss out on our latest videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.